In March of 2018, a Tesla Model X SUV slammed into a highway divider at 70 miles per hour in Mountain View, California. The impact killed the 38-year-old driver and severed the vehicle's powerful battery, scattering charged battery cells across the freeway. Mountain View firefighters faced a challenging and potentially deadly scene. They had no way of knowing how much energy remained in the vehicle's 400-volt battery, and they had no way of getting it out. Number one, we don't have the training. And number two, we don't have the tools. On a gasoline car, if it's leaking from the tank, we have the ability, on even on small tanks too, to drain that tank. We don't have the ability to deal with de-energizing an electrical battery. The problem Mountain View firefighters faced is called stranded energy. There's currently no established um, mitigation procedures in place uh, to safely remove the energy. Um, but going forward, we have to find a better way. Even when there's no fire or smoke present, a chemical reaction inside the damaged battery called thermal runaway can cause the battery to suddenly reignite hours or even days after the initial incident. There is no uh, established means of being able to diagnose the stability of the battery, um, what the extent of the damage is, is strained energy still posing a risk, um, has the battery burned out through completion. They have no, no way of declaring when the incident is officially safe. That's really the, the biggest concern. With no established way of combating stranded energy or the reignition problems, first responders have had to get creative. In the Netherlands, firefighters have started bringing shipping containers filled with water to the scene of electric vehicle fires. The damaged car is picked up with a small crane placed in the vat of water, which cools it and ensures reignition won't occur. The container with the car inside is then safely towed away. While this solution isn't yet practical in most U.S. departments, they too are coming up with new strategies. But we use high lift jacks to uh, lift up one side of the Tesla vehicle. And in that way, we were able to lob water onto the entire battery pack on the, the um, underside of the vehicle. In Mountain View, Chief Diaz says if his department gets another crash with a damaged battery. We're going to tow it. We're going to bring it to our city corporation yard. We're going to build a dam around it. And we're just going to let it soak until we know. We will know for sure that that battery is not going to reignite. Experts say that more practical solutions and protocols need to be developed, especially since battery use is increasing dramatically worldwide and incidents like these are only going to become more common. The International Energy Agency projects there could be as many as 130 million electric vehicles on the road in 10 years. That's up from just 3.1 million EVs in 2017. And electric vehicles are just the tip of the iceberg. Huge battery arrays called energy storage systems are being used more and more in homes, businesses, and by utility companies. Lithium ion and other battery chemistries are also now being used in battery powered lawnmowers, scooters, and even bigger vehicles like the just announced electric Hummer. I mean, the extent of, of this industry and the growth in this direction is, is exponential. As this industry grows, so will the stranded energy problem if we don't get a handle on this early. A lot of research is underway now, including attempts to create tools that can de-energize damaged batteries. There's also work being done to better define the problem, identify knowledge gaps, and take inventory of different strategies that currently exist. There's one recent report by the Fire Protection Research Foundation that you can read online now. There's already a lot of knowledge and training resources available from NFPA and others. This includes online trainings, classroom trainings, videos, and various articles. 30% of our vehicles are going to be EV vehicles. It's just imperative that these departments go out and get the knowledge, get the training, and bring it back to their department and get their members trained up. For much more about the issue of stranded energy, including the science, the challenges, and the research now being done, check out the January-February 2020 issue of NFPA Journal's cover story.